Now we're going to begin to discuss creating the information systems development project plan. Actually, what we're going to discuss most in this video are the three different approaches to the waterfall type of methodologies for the system development lifecycle, or SDLC. But once a project to develop a large-scale organizational information system has been approved, then someone must be assigned to be the project manager. And one of the most important tasks that the project manager must decide on early is to select the best project methodology. Now, project methodology refers to different versions of the system development life cycle. And the different versions of the system development life cycles are such that they, they fit better with particular types of projects. So we're going to look at the characteristics of the projects and we're going to look at which system development life cycle methodologies fit projects with different characteristics. We'll talk a little bit about the project work plan and a staffing plan, but mostly we're going to focus on these structured system development life cycles. Now, what are these things? These are methodologies. What we're trying to do, what the system development life cycle is, it's a series of phases. In this book, they're defined as planning, analysis, design, and implementation, those four phases. And within the phases, there are various tasks or steps that must be performed, several steps within each phase to complete a phase. Additionally, each phase has deliverables. These are formal documents that must be developed by the project development team and approved by the approval committee or whoever is the, the source of uh, or the authority to approve these projects before you can proceed to the next phase. So let's take a look at this and These are some of the issues or characteristics of a project, a particular project, that will dictate what type of methodology, which flavor, if you will, of SDLC to use to best develop that information systems project. Clarity of requirements. This is probably the most important how well do the users and analysts understand the functions and capabilities needed to, to use the system and needed to develop the system? How familiar, how much experience does the, the project management team have with the technology that is being used? How complex is this new system? Does it have a wide array of features? Does the system, will the system need to be integrated with other existing systems? Does it span multiple organizational units? How reliable does a system need to be? Now note that all information systems do not need to be reliable, but some do. For example, a system that would be a missile fire control system needs to be very reliable. A system in a, in a hospital that's used for cr critical life support functions would need to be reliable. But some systems don't need to be reliable. For example, Fitbit. If you use Fitbit, the exercise system, where you attach this device to your wrist and you walk and it tracks how far you've gone, it's extremely unreliable. You swing your arm and it thinks you're walking and tells you that you've taken 10 steps. But nevertheless, people use it all the time. Okay, what is the time frame for the project to be developed, to be completed? Is it a tight time frame? These large-scale organizational information systems that we're referring to usually take years to develop, not six months, but two, three years, that sort of range of time. Now, the first three approaches that we're going to look at, which will be in the next video, 
are called structured system development approaches. And they're called structured because what they attempt to do is to impose some sort of structure, some sort of rigidity, some framework of phases, tasks, steps, and deliverables that must be performed to successfully develop and complete this information system. Now, note that the, the process, the overall process of developing one of these large-scale information systems is it's inherently messy, I would say. That is, you may have 50, 100, hundreds of developers working simultaneously to develop this system on time within budget and to meet requirements. So there has to be some, impose some sort of a structure to at least try to make it more scientific. Okay, and in the next video, we're going to look at these three, the waterfall approach, which is the classic SDLC, the parallel development, which is a version of SDLC, which is also similar to the waterfall. It's structured, but it attempts to speed up the process. And the V model, V model relies more on testing. V model incorporates testing more intrinsically throughout the process. So this is where we'll pick up in the next video. We'll pick up with the waterfall, the classic waterfall development methodology. And we'll discuss those two other structured approaches, parallel de development and V model as well.